In this video, I'm moving on to part 110, chap 12, then 11.m. Link to this file is in the video description. The name of the file, chap 12, then 11, refers to MATLAB for Engineers 5th edition, and this content is covered in chapter uh, first 12, then 11. I am going a little bit out of order. Partly that's because there's just some topics that I didn't want to spend time on earlier, uh, but I didn't want to skip entirely, so I'm fitting them in here. This video is just going to cover symbolic plotting, which is in chapter 12, which fits more with the symbolic material covered in earlier videos. I was not able to get this code working in Octave. The previous symbolic material I got working in Octave, all I needed to do was use pkg load symbolic, run that command, and then all the symbolic material worked for me in Octave. Uh, that was not the case here. Uh, I was not able to generate these graphs. And by the way, also for MATLAB users, the Symbolics package does not come with the cheapest version of MATLAB, so you may not have it, so it may not work for you either. Now in future videos using this same MATLAB document, we're going to cover data types, sparse arrays, 3D arrays, cell arrays, structures, and just at the very end, binary to decimal conversion in MATLAB. So just a whole smorgasbord of content is going to be covered, but this video is just going to be symbolic plotting. I am going to go relatively fast because I'm mostly just saying like, hey, here's a function that's available, here's another one, here's what it does, and I'm leaving the details up to you for further investigation. But let's get into it. I'm using the figure command just to specify my first figure is going to be number one. Sims x declare symbolic variable x, set y equal to symbolic expression sine of x, and then instead of plot, I use f plot parentheses y. So f plot takes a symbolic expression as input, and then it will plot it. And I run it here, and I've got some more code I'm going to show you. I actually generate four different figures, and I'll go through the details of those uh, right now f plots our command to graph the symbolic expression. The default x-axis spans the interval from negative 5 to 5. If you want a different x-axis, well then your second input to f plot should be a vector of two numbers. The first number, the uh, lower bound of the x values, and the second number, the upper bound. And you can see that in my second graph here. So figure 2 is actually the same data as figure 1. It's just the x-axis is spanning a shorter interval, just from 0 to 2, instead of from negative 5 to 5. The third figure is generated first by using a new function that I'm introducing here, str2sym, which is an abbreviation of string to symbolic, which can be used to convert from a string, in single quotes, to a symbolic value. So here I'm putting x squared minus 2 into the variable s, and then down below I use fplot on s. Now also what I do down there is I set something equal to fplot, which is not something we ever do with plot but fplot can return data. And in this case, line data is what we get. It's a function line, which I believe is an object in MATLAB, if you're familiar with objects in programming languages. But basically, you can think of it like a struct. It's a variable that contains other variables that we can get access to. So, like I said, that fourth figure is actually generated just using regular plot, but I get access to the data within this line data variable the x data is line data dot x data. The y data is line data dot y data. So fplot can be used to get some extra information about the result of our symbolic expression, the curve that we would get from trying to graph it, from performing the calculation. Continuing on down, we'll see how to do implicit plotting with symbolics. So I plot two circles here. Now they don't look like circles until I adjust uh, my screen width here, but they are in fact circles. You can check out the X and Y axes and they're the same circle, but I generated them in two different ways. Now the first one is generated using F implicit. You're noticing a trend. We put the letter F in front of a lot of the functions that we would normally use for regular plotting for the symbolics. So F plot F implicit. And then in the parentheses, I just put in a symbolic equation based on x and y. I already declared those symbolic variables. F plot will not work for an equation like this that is not a function, right? Because a circle is not a function, doesn't pass the vertical line test, but F implicit does. Now here down below is how you would do it with just regular plotting. I would say it's more complicated. I have a t vector of values from 0 to 2 pi, and then I generate x and y values based on that t vector. So cosine for the x values, sine for the y values, and then I plot them. And I did have a commented out command here where I could 
uh, adjust the axis if I wanted to. And if you wanted to change the axes on the F implicit, what you would do is you would put in a secondary argument and it would be a vector of two numbers, in this case, negative 1.5 to 1.5. But circles are a little bit boring, so I wanted to show something a little more interesting. So I'm gonna run this graph here. And this is the butterfly curve, butterfly parametric plot. I just pulled this off of Wikipedia, uh, but there you can see it right there. I declared a symbolic variable T, and then the X values are based on this complicated expression here, as are the Y. And then when I F plot those, passing in the X symbolic expression and the Y symbolic expression over an interval of T values, the interval is referring to the T values, zero to 12 pi, that butterfly curve is what I end up with. Yes, this uses F plot, but in the previous example, I literally just used F implicit. We could translate that circle equation into the equations for two half circles, one in terms of X, one in terms of Y, and then use F plot. But based on the information I had on the Wikipedia page here, it was just easier for me to do F plot on this one. Down below, here's another way of getting this butterfly curve without any symbolics at all. This time we're actually using vectors of numbers. My T vector is zero to 12 pi. X and Y are going to be vectors of numbers calculated based on that T value. Now, the expressions that I'm using are almost identical. Yeah, I had to use some element-wise operators in the F plot using numbers, and I didn't have to do that on the symbolics, but otherwise it's pretty much the exact same thing. All right, now I'm gonna move down to 3D plotting with symbolics. Now the graph I generate here is not actually exactly the same as the example that I used in the plotting section in a much earlier video for the regular plotting, but that's okay. Uh, I don't know why I used a different one, but I did. And so we see these four different subplots here of 3D graphs. You can click on them and rotate them around just like with the regular numeric plots. And the graphs are generated by adding together three symbolic expressions, Z1, Z2, and Z3. And then the upper left graph is generated using F mesh as opposed to mesh for like a matrix or multiple vectors of values to generate a 3D graph. So as you're seeing again, just put an F in front of other function names. So F mesh for the upper left, F mesh again for the upper right, just add some contours in, F surf to get a surface in the lower left, and then F surf with some contours for the lower right. All right, let's look at some more 3D plots. So F contour is a provided MATLAB function, and I'm still passing to it just that same symbolic expression in the variable named Z. So my upper left graph I get from F contour, it's kind of that topographical map, or I guess just a contour map there. And then the upper right, I have F contour again, but I have some extra inputs to the function fill and on to basically fill in the spaces with the color of the line. The contour graphs are indicating uh, elevation. I think of it as an elevation graph. In lower left, we have easy polar. So as opposed to just polar or polar plot, we're using easy polar right here for the symbolics. So not F polar as you might have expected. And then in the lower right, and then the last one here, I'm still just using F surf again. I have three different symbolic expressions. I thought it would be fun to make a donut, uh, more technically a torus shape here. And that pretty much wraps us up for this video. In the next video, I'm gonna get into data types in MATLAB. We've inevitably already talked a little bit about data types, but we're gonna talk more about them. This is labeled chapter 11, which refers to MATLAB for Engineers 5th edition. I'm not actually a huge fan of that book, but my material was originally based off it, so occasionally you'll still see book references to it. So next video, numeric data types, video after that, character data types, and then beyond that, sparse arrays, and so on. We still have a bunch more material to cover, but we are getting close to the end of this video series. So those are just a few of the things coming up in subsequent videos.